Now, are you someone who has your best ideas on the toilet? Or in the shower? Are you someone who keeps a notepad next to your bed in case that great idea strikes in the middle of the night? Well, here at TEDx Sydney, we love all ideas, no matter when or where they strike you. We like big ideas and small ideas, long ideas and even short ideas. Today, you've heard quite a few long ones, but what you're about to hear are what we consider our fast ideas. Ideas that are pitched in 30 seconds flat. Now, we reached out to our audience, and five responded, and those five are joining me on stage now. Here they are. We're going to meet each of them, hear their fast idea in 30 seconds flat. There'll be a clock on the wall behind us. And then together, we're going we're gonna to have a bit of an audience, an audience prize. Number one, Catherine. Please welcome Catherine. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> the fan club is certainly present. Um, Catherine, tell me a fun fact about yourself. I love camping. So, I would choose to sleep under millions of stars in the Simpson Desert over five stars any day. Oh, like a hotel. Ah, clever. 30 seconds are on the clock. Here she goes. Humankind has been given a gift, longer lives. It's time to smash age stereotypes, annihilate ageism, and dump divisive generational labelling. Ping in our 60s isn't about cards, cruises, and technological illiteracy. In the same way as not all millennials are self-indulgent and entitled. Retirement is redundant. It's time to rethink how and when we work, take gap years, and re-educate, because ultimately, ageing is living. Woohoo! Wow. Wonderful. Next up, Saeed. Welcome, sir. Tell me, what's a fun fact about you? I try to do one thing different every year. A different thing every year. Is the different thing this, this year? Oh, this yes? This look, year. look, they, they've, they've got your back. Are you ready? Here we go, 30 seconds. Say ye, everybody. Who makes most inventions, scientists or engineers? But in fact, most inventions come from everyday people like drivers, plumbers, and nurses. In 2016, Australia spent 1.2 billion on innovation. Our government has chipped in 920 million through grants, and less than 2% was spent on everyday inventors. What if there is a platform to turn those brilliant ideas into marketable products to help humankind? What do you call them? Innovation drive? Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next up, we have Renato, whose idea is about your mum's cookies. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Great. And you, what's, your, what's the one fun fact about yourself we need to know? Uh, probably it's a sad fact. I'm nearly 31, and I still yeah. watch Dragon Ball, and I love it. You're 31, and you watch Dragon Ball Z. Yeah, yeah. there is great. a movie in December. Oh, yeah. great. And are you single? No, no, I, yeah. <laughs> no, not yet. Best of luck. Here goes Renato, 30 seconds. I literally love my mum cookies, but I can't find them here in Australia. And the average international delivery service will charge us $150 for four kilograms of cookies. Why don't we create a platform that will bring together users and travelers who would normally move from Europe to Australia, and that could give us the chance to buy space in their luggage. Thank you. <laughs> well done. It's like a cookie mule system. Uh, we'll see how that goes at quarantine. Next is Jasleen. Step forward. Jasleen, what is the one fun fact about yourself that we need to know? I love talking to plants and animals, and I think it's a great way to unwind and de-stress. Okay. 
Well, there's 5,000 people here now, so good luck with the stress thing. For 30 seconds, <laughs> off you go. Are you aware that a pen license is used to motivate children to improve their handwriting skills? Only after obtaining a pen license, the Australian primary school children can transition from a pencil to a pen. Ironically, we do not have a formal process before using technology and mobile phones for our children. My idea is to have meditation and mindfulness programs as part of the school curriculum, which will help us determine the maturity level of the children before they enter the virtual world and use technology in a productive manner. Yes, we can make it happen. Amazing. Thank you. And last but certainly not least, we have Jody, who before when I asked, um, it, says, it, said, it said on your submission that you were doing a PhD, and I asked her what it was in, and she had no idea. <laughs> so I would think step one of a PhD is figure out what it's about. Uh, what's your fun fact? Um, I once met my favourite uh, singer, Tom York. Ah, but, Radiohead? Yes. Cool. I got very nervous and asked him about his shoots. Sure. <laughs> Sure, 30 seconds on the clock. <laughs> Jody, everyone. Imagine a political landscape where climate change is a priority. I think we can make it happen. At next year's federal election, I'm willing to vote based on this single issue. I'll vote for the party whose climate policy is closest to what scientists recommend. I know there's other people like me willing to put their vote on climate and sustainability. And what if we all got together in one big voting block, thousands of votes on offer for good climate policy, we could engage scientists as lobbyists and politicians would want to meet with them. I want to create a platform to make this happen, where we can shape policy and not just vote for it. Amazing. There you are. There are our five fast ideas for this year. Now, um, we're about to use a really technologically advanced <laughs> unit of measure to determine a winner, so please bear with us. Uh, the Clapometer 2000 has been employed. Uh, I'm going to announce each speaker again, ask them to step forward, and I'll give you the title of their fast idea. And at the end, I get to pick which one I thought was loudest. So <laughs> that works well for me. So starting with Catherine and the redundancy of retirement. <laughs> Amazing. There was a standing ovation. That's how much people are loving your idea, Catherine. What about Sayi and his innovation drive? Yeah, yeah, not bad, not bad. Oh, no, she's still standing, must be tired legs, sitting around all day. Sorry, Catherine, don't want it to finish, but has to be, can't be biased. Uh, Renato and his Airbnb for travel luggage. Wow, wow. I don't know what's in his mum's cookies, but apparently everyone wants some. So that's great. Jasleen and the tech readiness of children. <laughs> great. And finally, Jody and her climate change voting block. Oh! Oh! Oh, oh, oh. We're getting some whoops and hollers down here. I really should have been paying more attention when all that was happening. Um, <laughs> I've narrowed it down to two finalists, so we're going to go again between two. I think the redundancy of retirement is one of them. No, 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 no. I'll tell you when I'm about to measure it. It's just, I'm just announcing them. And Jody's climate change voting block. Great. Very great. So, redundancy of retirement. Oh, oh, it's like we're on like a, some sort of reality TV show, it's, they're stamping. <laughs> or Jody and the voting block. Oh, oh, oh. Uh. I'm a sucker for a standing ovation, so Jody's got it. 
Can we please thank our five finalists from this year? Thank you very much, everyone, heading off that way.